Welcome everyone to Gamer Milk. Today, Intel's new stock cooler gets tested. Their upcoming 28 watt CPU beats their 45 watt part. Intel's Arc Alchemist launch lineup, and AMD's giving out free gaming performance. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, with Intel's non-K 12th gen CPUs right around the corner, we finally get a first look at their upcoming stock oh, cooler. That. For those who don't know, Intel is refreshing their stock coolers with their 12th gen CPUs. This one is called the Laminar RM1 and you can see that it comes with a blue ring instead of RGB. Obviously the aesthetics aren't the most important part but we actually have performance numbers as well. And when it comes to the performance, the cooler was tested with the 12,400 and 864 for 8 minutes, which drew 89 watts peak with an average of 81 watts. As for the temps, the RM1 cooler never got past 73 degrees Celsius with an average of 70 degrees. Now, that may not sound all that great, but keep in mind that A to 64 is a pretty intense stress test. Really, I'd say these numbers aren't bad at all. Sure, they're not the best, but keep in mind that this is still just a stock cooler. We'll have to see how well it compares to AMD's stock coolers when it's released. But first, this is your last chance to find a great deal on PC hardware with Newegg's year-end clearance event. While you won't find any real deals on GPUs, you can pick up some great deals on hard drives, power supplies, CPUs, and more. I'll actually have some links to some of my favorites down in the description below. They are affiliate links, but they won't cost you anything more, and they help the channel out. So what are you waiting for? Get your deal before they're gone. Next up for today, we have a new benchmark on one of Intel's upcoming 28-watt low-power CPUs. And let's just say, it's a massive jump in performance. I'm talking it rivals their non-low-power parts, so let's get right to it. The new benchmark comes from Geekbench, and it's of the i5-1250P, which is a 28-watt mobile chip with 12 cores and 16 threads, or 4 performance cores and 8 efficiency cores. When it comes to the score, the i5-1250P gets a single-core score of 1611 and a multi-core score of 8789. What's so impressive about that is that it actually beats Intel's 45-watt i7-11800H meaning their next-gen low-power CPUs beats their current-gen high-power CPUs, and by around 10% if we take the average score of the 11,800H. Not only that, but the i5-1250P isn't even the highest-end P processor. Basically, Intel's big dot little design is clearly a win for the company. Let's but just hope they don't let it go to their head. Next up, according to a new report from IT Home that originally comes from the X Preview forums, we finally have Intel's Arc launch GPUs, as well as a release date. According to the leaker, Intel originally planned to launch their Arc Alchemist GPUs in January, but they've apparently been delayed. Now the cards aren't expected until March of next year. Luckily, they have already been delivered to various brands for debugging, and of course, they'll likely still be announced at CES, but if this is right, we'll have to wait a few months to actually get our hands on one. When it comes to the launch GPUs for desktop, Intel's initially set to announce two models. The 512 EU model with 16GB of GDDR6, and the 384 EU model with 12GB of GDDR6. Interestingly, this leaker claims the 512 EU model is set to be around the 3070 and 3070 Ti performance, while the 384 EU model would challenge the 3060 to 3060 Ti. What's important there is that we've now basically heard the same thing from multiple leakers, so that performance is looking more and more accurate. Of course, as I've said in the past, I think that's a great place to be given this is their first real go at this. With that said, pricing and availability are more important than anything. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, while it's still nearly impossible to buy a GPU at a reasonable price, AMD's set to give us more performance. In a new report from Video Cards, the company is set to launch a new tech called Radeon Super Resolution, or RSR. Now, this isn't to be confused with Fidelity FX Super Resolution, or FSR, as RSR is actually set to work with all games. Well, pretty much all, as developers won't need to program it in their game or anything like that. They just need an exclusive full screen mode, which from what I understand is basically a regular full screen mode instead of something like borderless windowed mode. So you'll likely have have to use the full screen mode to get it to work. But that's it. 
The tech actually works through a Radeon driver and is based on the FSR 1.0 algorithm, so it should actually provide a serious jump in performance with similar fidelity to the native resolution. And this is obviously in response to Nvidia's image scaling announcement from a little while back. And from what we've seen, NIS and FSR are fairly similar, though NIS only works on NVIDIA GPUs. According to video cards, AMD's RSR is set to work with RDNA 1 and RDNA 2 GPUs. It may work with older GPUs, but so far the 5000 and 6000 cards seem to be all. I'm not sure if it's due to some kind of architectural difference between RDNA and older GPUs or what. Luckily, the tech is set to launch in January, so we'll almost certainly find out more at CES. And for all the best CES news, make sure you're subscribed to GamerMelt. Oh, and don't forget to hit that bell icon for notifications. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's upcoming RSR, or are you more excited for Intel's GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!